This is your Barbados Today Evening Update for Wednesday, April 27. Barbadian students and their regional counterparts get an additional three weeks to prepare for their CXC exams. At the height of a strong lobby by Teachers Union, the Group of Concerned Parents and the Caribbean Coalition for Exam Redress and the Jamaican Education Minister, CXC Registrar Dr. Wayne Wesley delivered a new timetable for the test and other measures to benefit students. A delay in the sitting of the regional examinations by three weeks. This will provide candidates with additional time to prepare for the examinations. Therefore, examinations will commence on Monday, the 23rd of May, 2022, and the results projected to be released in late August or early September. The details will be determined and communicated accordingly. Secondly, extension of the submission of school-based assessment from the June 30, 2022, by a further two weeks for the submission of both CAPE and CSET SBAs. And thirdly, that the release of broad topics be communicated to the candidates. CXC will share with the ministries of education the com for communication with candidates. The broad topics to be assessed on paper two. President of the Barbados Secondary Teachers Union, Marianne Redman, is elated at CXC's change of heart. During the meeting, moral mandate, fairness, reasonableness have been the buzzwords of Chairman Professor Sir Hilary Beckles as he chaired the meeting this morning. They underscored his impassioned submission, which truly properly persuaded the majority at the meeting to vote in favor of a three-week postponement of exams, the release of broad topics, and the further rescheduling of the submission dates for the SBAs. Excellent contributions also came from our Minister of Education, the Honorable Kay McConney, and also to the Jamaican Minister, the Honorable Faval Williams. The Barbados economy posted double-digit growth for January to March and is set to continue this trend for the remainder of the year, barring threatening challenges on the global front. Central Bank Governor Cleveson Haynes delivered the upbeat news in his quarterly economic review this morning. The 11.8% growth was largely spurred by a rebound in tourism arrivals, and though optimistic, Governor Haynes is wary that global travel could be negatively affected by the war in Ukraine, the prevailing COVID-19 pandemic, and other issues. We are, uh, as you know, a small open economy. We are very dependent on uh, trade, and on our primary trade is tourism, and therefore, the uncertainty about what is happening, particularly in relation to the war, uh, I think is something that concerns us because uh, it could work either way. It could be that persons decide, well, they're not going other places and they're going to look for warm destinations such as the New Caribbean, and we could benefit in that context. But there's also the risk that uh, persons decide to stay closer to home because of the uncertainty and therefore uh, not, not travel. And that is something that, quite honestly, we can't totally predict. We can look at the forward bookings, which I understand uh, are relatively encouraging. But as you would appreciate, uh, persons can also cancel if they see a, a change in the overall uh, global outlook. So that really is our, our, our primary uh, concern right now. What is happening internationally? How will that impact on what we do here and therefore uh, you know, while we are still optimistic that we will be able to achieve uh, our, our double-digit increase for 2022, we are also mindful that there are significant down downside risks uh, associated with that forecast. The Barbados Workers Union signals that a pay hike is not at the top of its agenda at this time. Instead, General Secretary Tony Moore made clear that while the issue is not completely off the table, she's focused on matters to improve the overall condition of workers. The Barbados Workers Union signaled the government that whereas we may not focus so heavily 
on an increase what we need to focus on. And it isn't to say that the idea of an increase is off the cards. But what we recognize is that there are more immediate and what we will say longer term conditions that will have implications for people not only during their working life but well into their post working life in retirement that we need to have regularized and that's where our focus has been. More outlines some of the issues the union has tackled so far. Terms and conditions of service that would regularize a number of the anomalies in the public sector which relate to positions, people who have still been working in jobs, functioning for a number of years, whose jobs are not established and who would need to have those established so that they can be confirmed at higher levels. We have situations still relating to changes that COVID brought about, working arrangements and so on. So our focus is definitely that. The Barbados Workers Union has been working very, very hard with statutory boards in particular, trying to ensure that where workers, for instance, in the government have been put on contract, that we have the government observe all of the relevant legislation relating to what is a contract for service versus a contract of service. And so at the transport board, for instance, we have been able to get a number of workers converted into the rightful status so that they can be remunerated and treated accordingly. There's regional and international news after this short break. More oxygen means more energy, means more adventure. Cure Oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Cure Oxygen, nature's ultimate water. Caribbean Cool is a refreshing juice drink that contains 100% vitamin C that you can enjoy any time of the day. It has a refreshingly awesome range of Caribbean flavors. Moby, orange, fruit punch, pineapple, sorrel and pineapple coconut. Suitable for any occasion. Caribbean Cool. To regional news, Guyana's President Dr. Irfan Ali met with the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom Boris Johnson today and the British leader expressed interest in securing much-needed oil supplies from Georgetown in light of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Uh, Prime Minister uh, uh, Boris also um, alluded to the fact that we must move towards government-to-government uh, -to -government dialogue, G2G dialogue, in which we'll identify the high-priority areas identify areas in which we can have further collaboration and identify areas in which the government can work together with each other in transformational uh, projects. Well, uh, for example, one such thing that we discussed, uh, given what is taking place in Ukraine, um, how the UK energy uh, security, and, and he was very much interested in, in, in Guyana and what role we can play uh, in this regard. Uh, you know, we are right now discussing uh, whether we go with a national company or whether we go out to an auction of all the blocks. So all of these also were part, all of this was also part of the discussion. And the technical team are now tasked with defining the areas uh, for the government-to-government -government talks and government-to-government -government collaboration. On the international front, the UK Foreign Secretary Liz Truss says Russian forces must be pushed out of the whole of Ukraine. In a keynote speech in London today, Ms. Truss said victory for Ukraine was now a strategic imperative for the West. The fate of Ukraine hangs in the balance. But let's be clear, if Putin succeeds, there will be untold further misery across Europe and terrible consequences across the globe we would never feel safe again. So we must be prepared for the long haul. We've got to double down on our support for Ukraine. And we must follow through on the unity that we've shown in the crisis. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3.
FM。